Hello, how's everybody doing today? Ryan Hall, y'all here with the weather forecast. And once again, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. We're gonna start off with our Southern Slider. It's putting down some snow right now in North Carolina. And then we're gonna shift our focus over to the West Coast and start watching our next storm that I believe is gonna bring some heavy snow to Texas. Let's look at all that and more on the radar. All right, here it is, the nationwide view. We've got our Southern Slider system on the east and we've got our new system on the west. Check this out, just a little bit of precipitation near Boise, Idaho, and in Oregon and Washington. This is all associated with a piece of energy that's coming off of the Pacific Ocean that's eventually going to dip down into Texas, and uh, hopefully it drops a bunch of snow for you guys. We're going to talk about that more right here in a second, but for now, let's scroll over to our southern slider system. There it is. All the little snowflakes that you see are snow reports from weather spotters, so it is snowing in a lot of these places right now. It looks like in the mountains, a lot of places have picked up four to six inches of snow so far, and there's been a pretty consistent heavy band of snow hanging out here in south central western Virginia that's been putting down quite a bit of snow just south of Roanoke and Blacksburg and if you remember when we were first looking at the weather models on this when the Canadian was showing this looks like the whole thing went a little bit further north than what even the short range models were showing and the Canadian wins again I'm telling you guys you got to be on team Canadian but yeah we've got heavy snow taking place just south of Blacksburg and Virginia here and it does look like it's moving out of the mountains now in Tennessee and western North Carolina and this will keep moving to the south and east and everybody else is going to have a brief chance for a burst of snow later on. Uh, we can take a better look at that on the models. Woo buddy, here's the HRRR model. It's a short range forecast model. We like to look at it while the storm's going on because it acts sort of like a uh, simulated radar. So let's put this bad boy into motion. And as you can see, here we are right now. And when we move forward just a little bit, this is 4.45 p.m. A little bit of a deformation band or some dynamic cooling enhanced snow pops up in this precipitation in North Carolina and it just moves all the way down to the coast. Now when this starts, it's going to come down pretty heavily and this is going to happen in Charlotte and Raleigh all the way over to the coast of North Carolina. As far as accumulation goes, I don't know how much exactly you should look out for because uh, this is only happening because of, you know, dynamic cooling happening in the atmosphere. The surface temperatures are still pretty high. Certainly shouldn't cause too many problems on the roads, but if it comes down hard enough, it will stick for a short period of time. But yeah, this is what we're looking at. This is our southern slider snow storm, I would say that this did kind of underperform. You guys remember we were looking at the models on this for a couple days and the track of the storm and everything, uh, you know, worked out pretty well, but the actual amount of snow that's on the ground for a lot of people is a lot less than what some of the models were showing. Speaking of snowfall accumulation, let's look at that accumulation map and see what the rest of the storm is going to bring for people. And it looks like right here in central North Carolina, one to two, maybe three, some places four inches as possible, but you got to remember that this is the 10 to 1 ratio snowfall forecast. This is how much snow is going to lay on the ground if conditions are perfectly favorable for sticking snow. And in a lot of these areas, it's not. A lot of the snow that falls is going to melt, so it's going to take away from these totals. If you are shaded in gray or blue anywhere on this map, though, I do expect you to get some heavy snow falling at some point. But how much is actually going to stick on the ground and how long will it stick around? That's, you know, it's probably not going to be much and it's probably not going to be for a long time. So yeah, that's going to wrap up and our southern slider will be completely out of here by around 8 a.m. tomorrow and now it's time to shift our focus to the next storm that's coming in on the west coast let's take a look at the euro this is that area of precipitation we were just looking at on the radar and watch it it's gonna shift down the rocky mountains here combined with some energy from the gulf of mexico and mexico itself and then boom we've got a heavy snowstorm possible for areas in northern texas and then the panhandle of texas maybe some parts of new mexico and there may be a few flakes try to fall as far south as austin texas Texas. And then as we keep going, that heavy snow makes it into Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Tennessee, and Kentucky. It kind of fades away here. But this is not our last chance for this winter. I promise you that. I've been talking about it a bunch. We've got that polar vortex split. We're going to have a lot of cold air in place here in uh, the eastern part of the United States. And we're going to have multiple opportunities in late January to track something awesome. And as we play the Euro way on out, here we are about 174 hours out. You can see that cold air. Really big cold trough dropping in the United States. All the models are confident about this. All we need is a disturbance, a low pressure system, some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico or something to interact with it. And then we can all be in Snowtown. Come on, Snowtown. All right, let's take a look at the Canadian. This has been our favorite model so far this year. It nailed the Christmas Eve storm. It was pretty good with this storm that just went through. And let's see what it's showing for our next storm. All right, our southern slider goes out to sea right there. And here comes our second one. We've got convergence. 
A lot of snow, heavy snow bands falling in northern Texas. It really just kind of sits still there for a minute, and then it goes on into Louisiana, and then I believe the Canadian loses it once again. This actually holds it together a little bit better um, than the Euro does, and once again, I think we should pay more attention to the Canadian because of its merits and how well it has done this year. You see, if we play this on out, this is showing a decent snow shot uh, for you know everybody in this area. Now, it's not gonna be anything crazy. It's not gonna be a historic blizzard or a major winter storm, especially north of that line, but it is something to look out for and there's a chance for it to strengthen. And if we play the Canadian on out, let's see if it shows our cold air coming in. There's some, oh yeah. The 540 thickness line goes all the way down into Southern Georgia and Southern Alabama. And if we play it all the way out as far as it goes, Goes, you can see that next one uh, really coming down that's going to crash further into the United States and give us uh, all those opportunities I've been talking about so much and uh, yeah that's the Canadian now it's time to look at the GFS all right let's put this GFS in motion it shows massive enhancement of snow bands in Colorado and New Mexico starting at around 10 p.m. January 9th that's tomorrow we're getting really close to this storm. And then right around 4 p.m. January 10th, that seems to be the peak of the storm for Texas. And then as we keep on going through Louisiana, Mississippi, everybody gets a little bit of snow all the way up to about this line right here. But it still shows this semi wave, you know, trying to do something as it works up the coast. There's still a possibility that it deepens a little bit more and brings some snow to some people in the mid Atlantic Appalachian region and Northeast. And there's our first shot of cold air and the GFS should show that second one really nicely. Oh yeah. Look at that, 540 line all the way down into Mobile, Alabama. Does it go, oh, it goes even further than that, 540 line all the way down into Central Florida. It's gonna be cold. If you are in this area right here, January 23rd, um, around that timeline, that's when that really intense cold air is gonna move in. And once that's in place, or even the first little cold shot, once that is in place um, and we get some moisture to interact with it, we are gonna be looking at snowstorms. Very interesting pattern showing up here on the GFS. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun to watch, guys. Make sure you're subscribed. All right, since we're so close to this storm here in Texas, we can actually look at it on some of our higher resolution short-term forecast models. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. This is the NAM 3KM. It's gonna give us a real high resolution look at what the storm's gonna look like as it comes through. 9 p.m. tomorrow, we've got snow showers entering the panhandle of Texas. 3 a.m. January 10th, Amarillo, Texas is starting to see some snow. And then it really just kind of blows up right here in central Texas. And what's happening here, it's a, it's a really unusual kind of storm. Um, and all my people in Texas will tell you that, you know, getting snow at all is kind of unusual right now. I think it's been six years since a lot of these people have seen even an inch of snow. But what's happening here is there's already cold air in place in this area right here, right? And then when this energy comes down and starts interacting with this Gulf moisture, it causes a lot of warm, moist air to start coming up this way. And we all know warm air rises, so that's gonna stay aloft and just run over that cold air. Once it meets with that cold air, it's gonna fall in the form of snow. And if I rock this back and forth, you can kind of see where it's kind of swinging around the southern part of Texas right here. It kind of makes it seem like it's stationary right in that uh, central Texas area. It's just gonna be like a conveyor belt of warm, moist air over cool air, dropping heavy bands of snow in a lot of areas in central Texas. Looks like some of the heavier bands are gonna fall near Abilene, Texas. And then right around here, you can see the Dallas-Fort Worth area is right there where you need to be. It's pretty common for storms like this to shift a little bit to the north and west at this time frame too. So that would be even better for Dallas. Also here at the beginning of the storm, Lubbock, Texas. So it looks like they're in a good spot to get some heavy snow. And then as we play this on out, it just keeps on going to the east and that's as far as we can go on the NAM 3KM. All right, let's play this out one more time. Texas snowstorm, here it comes, baby. All right, now let's take a look at the snowfall map. All right, NAM 3KM snowfall map. How much snow can we get in Texas? And let's move on through here. There's our storm coming in and just boom, heavy snow all the way through central Texas. Kind of uh, kind of insane to look at this, honestly. It's been a while. Now this map doesn't have cities on it, so I'm kind of guesstimating where everything is, but I've got a pretty good idea that Dallas is somewhere in this area. And according to this model, it looks very possible that you can get one to three inches of snow. Just a small shift north though, and that turns into two to four inches, possibly three to six. Now I believe this big bullseye right here is near Waco, Texas. Look at that, some areas could see nine to 10 inches of snow according to this model. It is important once again 
again to mention that this is a 10 to one ratio kind of deal. The only way you're gonna get 10 inches of snow is if every flake that falls sticks. And it does seem like that is a little bit more likely in these areas than with our current Southern slider storm. There's going to be some melting that takes place. There's going to be the initial little bit of snow that falls is probably not gonna stick. But due to that warm air aloft and all that moisture coming in over the cold air on the surface, there's gonna be some very intense, heavy snow bands here. So it's just not gonna have time to melt. And sometimes you get in a situation where that first layer of snow falls, freezes the ground, and then everything on top of it sticks. So anywhere in this area right here is a pretty good shot at seeing at least six inches of snow. And then all the way up here in Lubbock, you can see four or five inches of snow. This is going to be a pretty memorable snowstorm for people in Texas in this area right here. We're gonna keep a close eye on it. We're gonna look at this storm tomorrow and see if there's any more shifting. But this right here looks to me like it's uh, it's pretty close to what's gonna happen. All right, so here's the regular NAM. We've gotta look at it too. It's a little bit of a lower resolution, but it goes out further. So here's our storm coming in. This one looks to me like the best area for snow is gonna be in eastern Texas, northeastern Texas here. Uh, we'll definitely have to look at that snowfall map and see exactly where it places all the highest totals. Um, you got all that gulf moisture coming in on cold air. Uh, when that happens, man, somebody gets a lot of snow, I'm telling you. Somebody in this part of the state is going to be in snow town, baby. And let's play this all the way through. There it goes into Louisiana and it's gone. All right, let's look at the 10 to one snowfall ratio on this one and why? Wow, it just lit up, son. <laughs> so here's Houston, and right around here's Austin, and right around here's Shreveport, Louisiana. And I wanna say Dallas is right around there somewhere. So Dallas, Fort Worth area uh, do a lot better with the NAM 12KM model than the 3KM, because it looks to me like you're in the six to eight inch range at this point. Abilene, Texas is over here. This, according to this model, could get up to a foot. Same thing for Waco, Texas. Lubbock up here, once again, even Lubbock's doing better. The NAM 3KM seemed to be a little bit more conservative with snowfall totals but once again it's a higher resolution model so it's a little bit more accurate but this one definitely dumps a bunch of snow on eastern texas we'll have to see where that goes especially on the main southern part of, of this uh this cutoff line there's going to be a lot of problems here with ice and mixing it's not all going to be snow and not all of it's gonna stick. So so if you are south of this line, south of Waco, and it's showing that you're gonna get a foot of snow, I'm not 100% confident in that right now. It may snow very hard, and you may get a pretty decent amount of accumulation, but the, if, I don't know if it's, there's gonna be enough cold air there for you to actually see a foot pile up. But yeah, that's really interesting to look at, and the NAM model goes all the way out to 84 hours, so let's zoom out a little bit. And if we zoom out, we can kind of see a little bit of everything here. Lots of northern Louisiana, northwestern Louisiana, could see over a eight inches of snow and that goes into Arkansas, and then that's where it kind of uh, starts fizzling out. Yeah, big bullseye of snow for east, northeast Texas, northwest Louisiana, and extreme southern Arkansas. It's gonna be very interesting to watch play out. And let's take a look at it one more time. This time we're looking at the whole nation. This is that same NAM 12KM model. There's our storm. It starts going up towards Mississippi, Tennessee, and that's the last frame. Interestingly, I see a little bit of strengthening right here on the last frame. Who knows where that's gonna go? But if you want snow in this area, what you're hoping for is some intensification right here. We need more Gulf moisture. We need more cold air coming down behind. We need this 540 six line to kind of form a wave and we need a deepening low pressure system for this to turn into the storm we all want it to be but for now i think we've looked at this at every angle we could possibly look at it from <laughs> all right guys that was a fun one once again if you're seeing snow right now if you're in north carolina virginia uh, and you're getting snow coming down, I would love to see it. Make sure you send me a picture on Twitter. All my links are down in the description. I would like to eventually have enough of a community of people who are sending in storm reports and pictures and stuff um, that we can include it in these videos. It'd be a fun way to start it out if we've been tracking a storm for a long time and it finally comes to fruition uh, and we've got actual people who watch the videos that are on the ground reporting it, sharing pictures and videos and stuff, be a great way uh, to start out the videos. Guys, once again, I just gotta say thank you. Thank you so much for all the support. This channel is doing amazingly. If we continue on the trajectory we'll, we'll we'll beat the weather channel son who needs a weather channel when you got youtube you know what i'm saying all right but for real thank you for watching and sticking around if you haven't yet make sure you hit the subscribe button i promise it'll be worth it slap a like
like on this video. And once again, I want to start a conversation down in the comments. If you guys live in the United States, tell me where you live and tell me the last time you got a significant amount of snowfall, more than four to six inches. I know for a lot of you, it's been a while and I'm pulling for you. And at some point this year, we're going to be tracking a storm that's going to dump a foot in your backyard, unless you live in uh, Florida or something. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to shut the heck up now and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Woo!